So males and females are I definitely. I don't think we are worlds apart. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> then let's test that out by a game of trivia. You're gonna get a few questions and you'll write your answers on the whiteboard that I'm gonna give you. At the count of three, flash it and we will see if you guys are truly worlds apart. On the first question, on the average, right, how many words a day do men say and do women say? So you need a number. Okay. I don't I don't I don't have a number. I just have a proportion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's writing an essay. No la. Flash it. Oh one wow. Two, three, twelve, one thousand two hundred a day. Mm. Women four thousand five hundred. Okay. Mine is one is to ten. Uh. So every oh. one word the men say that women have ten words. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's not a bad thing, it's a good yeah. thing because we need to explain ourselves more. But that is a to get the point across. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Okay, the great review is on actual studies, actually the answer is roughly the same amount, which is 16,000 words oh. a day. I didn't ask you behind. That's not, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> okay, it's a popular stereotype, but research doesn't support the myth that women are actually more talkative than men. Mm. A study published in Science found that there was no statistically significant difference between the amount of words spoken by male and female uni students, although there were large variations between the individuals. Mm. So, many other studies found that men talk more than women, particularly when speaking to strangers or informal situations. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, the second question. Why are men considered to be better at maths than women? What is maths? Oh! <laughs> that's your answer. I say it's not true. It's not true. At least yeah. that's what? That's what you believe. That, that's what I believe. Is it jobs? I, I wrote that jobs. Uh -huh. So, I'm saying that in, in case if people still think that's that's real, like like men has better in math, it's because those mathematics jobs are usually taken by men mm. first mm. in the past. So that's why that's what they perceive, but it's actually not true. Mm. Yeah. For me, it's just I think the tendency to use the different parts of the brain. So men tend to tend to move to this logical cal cal calculative side of things, while women may be more the organi organizational, the softer skills kind of things. But I also agree, it could depend also on mm. the, the the societal or cultural bias towards males or females towards um, the roles involved or asked of them. So yeah. Okay, the point goes to Michelle. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Standardized testing shows that there's no gender differences in math performance. In fact, in countries that have the greatest gender equality, gender disparity in math performance doesn't exist at either the average or gifted level. Mm. Other studies suggest the reason that there are not more women at the top levels of traditionally male fields mm. is not because women are worse, but because they are still underrepresented, as what Michelle mm. said. Third question, why are men considered to be funnier than women? To appear more desirable. Oh. Oh wow, okay, that's social. Um, mine a bit more corporate. I think it's because um, in the past, it's a lot of boys club. So they have their own jokes and everything. So um, they seem funnier. And women, because they are they come from household, they, they do have the kids traditionally. So they're more empathetic, they're more emotional. So maybe they lack the funny bone. Yeah, so that's my thought. Interesting, mm. interesting. I think because uh, socially, maybe men need to appear to be funny in order to make the make their date or their woman laugh. So that's why we try to be funnier. But I don't know. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> the point goes to Yongxuan. Oh! <laughs> Finally. Yes, because men uh, are required to be more funnier because fun because humor is related to or rather associated in the human brains to intelligence. Last one is a tiebreaker, okay? Okay. Who is better at detecting body odor? Men or women? <gasps> oh, this is tough. <laughs> one, two, three. Ding, ding. <laughs> yeah, me as well. <laughs> oh, so either we got it or we don't. Yeah. <laughs> now I live with a man who constantly complains about scent. After five years, I get used to it that he is, so he is. <laughs> Okay, anecdotally, I, I don't have to research and back this up, but I think men cannot smell their own, but they can smell others. So, so it's, uh, to, to me, it goes back to uh, the evolutionary, very primal kind uh, of thing uh. that scent uh, marks your territory in, mm. the, in that kind of thing. So since um, males are, uh, you know, the assertive, territorial, uh, naturally, they, are, they may be more inclined to be able to detect. 
yeah. in a sense. So, so uh, it could be a misdirection in a sense for women to have a lot of perfume products and whatnot. But I think men are more sensitive overall. Mm. Okay, your reasoning is correct, but both are wrong. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it's evolutionary basis. But the thing is that because um, there are, women are more likely to smell a man's natural odor through any fragrance that he's trying to tr to use and hype. So when a man uses cologne, actually the woman is able, more able to detect his actual real body odor. And this is because uh, it's in, like sweat tells us a lot of like biological information, like yeah. the whole evolution and like issue, right? And hence it's important to women when choosing a mate. Hence inherently women are more sensitive to smell. Do I get method mark because my ex my explanation was correct, <laughs> but the answer was wrong. <laughs> method mark. <laughs> what are your thoughts after this trivia? All of us have a perception of either man or woman and how they should conform to or how should they should be, be it scent, you know, be it whatever, right? Like humor. And yet that could box each gender in a different ways that might not be across the board the same. So like, like my last question, I think of this person in my life that I think he's a certain way, right? But he's definitely out of the usual <laughs> folks. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I think we just have to be very open about gender. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think mm. the way that we answer also reflects how we see male and female based on uh, our cultural lens. Mm. Uh, even not only cultural lens, like like the way we the, the way we are taught to understand men, women, male, female, etc. Mm. etc. I guess the trivia does show that we are not <laughs> as far apart as we think we are, in a sense. So oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, at least biologically speaking, lah. So yeah. otherwise, yeah. So is there a final conclusion that men and women are not so worlds apart? Uh, I think we have definitely similarities, but there's different... Comp we are still fundamentally some parts that are different. I think as a species, as a homo <laughs> sapiens, we are quite similar. But I think when it comes to some other things, we are really quite different. Mm. Which brings me to the first, first thing that comes to mind between men and women. Like, communication is... So, it, look, I wouldn't say so challenging. It is quite challenging sometimes oh. to, to talk with women, right? I mean, for men, is if I say A equals to A, but for women, if I say if I say not A, doesn't mean that it's not A. Like it could be it could be B or C, but I just mean not A. So mm. what's up with that? Like very hard, you know, guys. <laughs> okay, yeah, I I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. It could mean A minus B plus C minus D multiplied by Z. So that's how it goes. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> okay, maybe I can share some light, right? So, I think in woman's mind, understanding of my life over the last 30 dec uh, three decades, right? Um, there's not a black and white area. We have a huge patch of grey mm. and a different shade of grey, thousand millions of shades. So, it's very hard to give an answer what men would like to it to be and what men would like it to be okay. I'm over generalizing over this, right? But, but it's it's hard to just pinpoint a segment and say, yeah, that's the answer. I don't know. Maybe that's that's the part, right? Where emotions are different. You know, you can't actually pinpoint a a certain emotion at one time. So that's why I think um, that really differ from men and women. Um, and the second thing is, I think men usually comes up with you know. <laughs> either black or white, they want or they don't want. But women have some parts where we were, I want it, but I might not want the 100%. I only want one sip of your ice cream, uh, your coffee, or a tablespoon of your cake, and that's about it. But men will like a very straightforward answer of, yes, I want the cake, and no, I don't want the coffee, which doesn't work here in this country, <laughs> the female land. <laughs> No, so, so that's that's interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. if if you already okay, so let's use the food for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? If you want one one part of the cake, you already know you want one part of the cake. Is it really difficult to say I just want this part of the cake? 
because for for men is <laughs> so, 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 so it's, it's it's interesting because because for for, yeah, for, for men like like uh, uh like even when go out groups not not even say the dating or whatnot yeah. but even in groups where where uh, uh we, we we talk about sharing food or whatnot uh okay now cannot share food lah yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. like back back we can when we can share food um so, sometimes the, the 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 females among my group of friends will be like uh okay now no I'm not hungry lah not hungry then I said when the food comes can I steal one fry can I steal two, two uh, a bit here and there then in the end it's like if you want something, uh-huh. say it. Like, let your yes be yes and your no be no, right? Okay, that, that's, how, that's how... So that's how... You so, are... I think... Okay, so I think... Which is interesting because I think men and women are wired differently. And I yes. really agree with yeah. that. So while I'm not saying that women must communicate like how men understand or men communicate mm-hmm. how women understand. But I think as we understand uh, each other, I think that's where we can reach... a. Uh, Com- okay, I won't say compromise. We can accommodate each other. Correct, correct, in, correct. In, in, agree, in that sense. agree. I don't think it's... Um, uh, a make or break or a very big situation but it is a crucial thing for us as human beings male or female to understand about each other and ourselves so do you think in today's world um, communication is truly the pitfall the struggle between men and women I think it's a it's one of the issues but may not it, it's not the most pertinent one or one, not one of the most pertinent one I think it's like hidden within bigger issues so one of the things that I think it's quite common in our world today, at least the past 10 years, is on the whole idea of feminism and the popularity mm. of feminism and how that, that has become, uh, in, um, not, I won't say ingrained, it's more commonplace in our society today. Yeah. As a caveat, and I think mm. at the end of the day, uh, I think it's important to suspend our beliefs in, this, in when it comes to conversations. So we cannot understand uh, others until we hold back from what we feel about the subject and try to listen to the other person's point of view. So I think that's a caveat I want to bring up first. Okay, I, I, I think feminism has multiple waves along yeah. the course of the, the 50, 60 years uh, since it first came out, right? Uh, and I think right now there are some, uh, there are miscon- misconceptions about what it is and what it stands for. Um, so we've seen in, in we've seen in some Western media or some Western mm-hmm. countries where um, feminism is about female representation uh, mm. in media or mm. breaking the glass ceiling and things like that. I think these causes are important to fight for, right? But I feel one key misrepresentation that is actually affecting how it can how, uh, its effectiveness in the world today. I think it's on equating feminism to female superiority. Mm. rather than female equality. That's uh, one of the, the, the key things about how, how feminism is being viewed today uh, without, without the understanding, or without understanding what mm. it is, is that uh, to the lay person or to a person sitting on the fence, feminism is about women's rights rather than women's rights to be equal to men. Mm. So if, if we take a step back and we move away from the misconception, I think that uh, uh, we, we, we can, that there can be effective communications and, and effective conversations about women and what we can do to elevate the disenfranchised. Mm. I think that's the, that's one of the most important things to talk about. Like, that It is about equality between the genders and this equality True. doesn't necessarily mean that um, whatever men face, women must face. Therefore, therefore the, the whole yeah. the whole notion of men, mandating women to, to serve national service or whatever kind of thing, I don't fully agree with that immediately because okay. this, this equality is on the surface. Rather, I'm, more, I'm personally more interested in equality in opportunities, in, in, in obtaining mm. opportunities, breaking the glass ceiling. We're talking about uh, uh, their, their, their roles in media, their roles in the family, mm. how, how we, we shift the concept of a housewife or a house husband yep. and we evolve that concept in a sense. So equality okay. of opportunity rather than just uh, equality on the surface. So that's what mm. I, I, I personally am, am... I wouldn't say that grinds my gears to use a meme, <laughs> but, but, I, but I, I, I think this key mis- this misrepresentation of female superiority equals to feminism is... Uh, it, I think it's one that damages um, both the feminists yeah. and uh, 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 those who are on the fence. True. So, Agree. And you know, we, we have seen uh, uh, how um, people who have this misconception react to it. Yeah. So what do you think about this that... Uh, how has these reactions of towards this misrepresentation affected the conversation between men and women and affects the conversation about feminism? Mm, that's a very good question because I was raised in a family where my mom wear the pants. So everything my mom says is the law, mm. right? So um, I grew up believing that if I want to be an astronaut or I want to be whatever in the world, I can definitely do it. And in, I'm not limited by my gender. The, it's good that you brought up the 
point that you know um, the female supremacy, right? That that I'm better than a male because I grew up thinking I'm best, much better than my brothers. And um, it's funny because after that, when after you know after three decades, right? Then I realized there's no um, who's better than who because we're all human. We are the, we are all the same species, right? Mm. Uh, it's just the equality that we're looking for, right? It's the like you mentioned, the house husband and the housewife. And that's where it's very important to see from a female, what am I looking, you know, when we look at all these um, feminist um, actions, right? The, the activities and trying to drive, right? If we go for too much, that will definitely drive the fact that, you know, the man is saying that you are trying to take over me you're not trying to have a seat at the table. We are taking over the seat. Mm. And, and that's a big thing, right? Especially at work, you know, at social. Because we are sort of um, pushing the husband out of the role of being a husband, right? And that's not what we're looking for. Uh, unfortunately, this is what we see in the world, right? Being strong as a woman can be a threat. Because um, I was when I was in the single and I was dating over here, um, it's common that men, um, the the potential partner, actually said, "You're too strong. That's why we cannot go further than in this relationship." Mm. Is it because the woman is too strong, or is it the man is too weak? I don't have an answer. Hopefully, maybe you can shed some <laughs> light on this. <laughs> maybe because in their mind, um, a wo- a woman should not be strong. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so so a uh, woman equals to demure, equals to uh, must be submissive to the man, uh-huh. must listen to the man, cannot be cannot be cannot hold a better position in career than yes. the man. You know, things like yes. that. Which yeah. which I won't judge. I won't say that mm. that these men are not right. I, I won't say that. I, I'm not. Who am I to say that? Right. But we uh, as we understand where where we're coming from when we see uh, male and female, it helps us also to re- to recognize. Uh, who are the men and women we can accept in our lives? Whether it's friends sure. or mm. partners or whatnot. And if this is an incompatibility. But this incompatibility, I feel, la, personally I feel, it yeah. doesn't mean that the woman must um, change themselves to follow as to what this man thinks a woman should be. Ah, uh, okay. I think, hey, women, if you're strong, great. I yeah. think we need strong women in society. Mm. As much as we need strong men in society. Yes. We need a sensitive women in society as much as we need sensitive men in society. Yeah. And how we are wired in a sense, all the way down to each of us personally, mm. we have I really believe we have something to contribute to our circle of friends, Agreed. our workplace and things like that. Yeah. And while we continue you know, to work on ourselves and and adjust and change and whatnot, I think it's important to to not change ourselves. Because just because someone else wants you to change and conform to a certain stereotype. Agree. In a way. Because you brought up this term, right? Submissive. Mm. And this is something that we read in the Bible, yeah. right? Um, so do you think your faith have um, sort of mold your perspective in this topic? Yes, actually it did. So, uh-huh. um, so when I was younger, uh, right, like, like in the youth kind of thing, I was... Okay, I tried to be what they call the snack, the sensitive new age guy. Oh wow! Yeah, I try- <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, okay. so, so uh-huh. this, so this term essentially means that I'm a guy, but I'm very sensitive to my emotions. I'm very sensitive to emotions of other people, okay. in a way. So, uh, um, I, I, I was like that when I was younger, uh-huh. and um, I think personally it caused me to to open up to to a lot of unnecessary hurts mm. from people. So I took criticism personally okay. when I was younger. Um, I also took. Uh, discouragements uh, uh, I put uh, uh, upon myself and if people said that I was not enough of a man I took it I, I took it personally in a sense it shaped who I was it defined who I was mm. and uh, I, I yeah I think, I think at that point in time it wasn't it wasn't the nicest time in my life so, <laughs> so uh, uh, it, it was it was just um, you know b- bullying from from guys uh, uh, always being rejected by, by by girls and things like that I think this continued to build uh, dissonance in a way between what I think a man should be versus the messages that I'm receiving mm. from the world around me. It's only when uh, I think what seven, eight years ago when I started when, when, I, when I was really diving into philosophy, social sciences uh, and then I think that's where I started to think about the what does the Bible actually say about masculinity? What does the Bible actually mm. say about men and women? God shaped 
was shaping the way that um, uh, a man sh- uh, how how he defines a man should be. So, for instance, uh, uh, biblical masculinity means that um, uh, men are to be humble before God. Mm. God is your authority, uh, or, wh- or whoever it is that is your authority. Yeah. Um, as a biblical man, my responsibility is to be humble. Yeah. My responsibility is also to love the people around me, to love, protect, and provide for the family. Mm. Reading the Bible more, uh, reading uh, um, more about these things, I think it helped me to shape my idea of masculinity, which actually helps me then to see the importance of women. Mm. There is this, I mean, there are, there, there are some detractors, uh, some fem- feminist detractors, okay, yeah, feminist detractors mm. who always like to quote this part of the Bible that wives must submit to your husbands. Oh, yes. And things like that. Yeah. And they quote it and they use that as a, as a way to say that Christianity is um, uh, uh, like, like is, there, is there patriarchal in nature and things like that. Yes. But they tend to miss the verse before that, which is, husbands love your wives. And that verse comes before the wife, the, 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 yep. the thing to wives, right? So if so, as husbands, as as a as a man, my role is to love my wife. My role yeah. is to love the family first. Agree. Then submission comes after. But submission, okay. I, I I personally believe that submission doesn't mean blindly following. Submission is the wife and husband come together as equals to this to to talk about things, and then at the end of the day, the husband makes the decision. Yep. But if the wife don't agree, I believe the wife should speak up. Mm. That's that's how I feel about these things. Mm. In a sense that I think that is, a, I think that's a healthier way to view men, women, yeah. feminism. In a sense, and I really feel that so far my journey in the faith it has helped me to appreciate uh, the need for equal opportunities for both men and women. It's funny you brought this up, right? Because I came from the school of thought that oh my gosh, the Bible is so old-fashioned. <laughs> Who talk about submissive wife in this day and age, right? Mm. And um, now being a married woman, it's it's funny because I. Fully understand, okay, not fully, maybe that's that's over over um, too ambitious of me to say fully. But I got a glimpse of why it's needed. It's not actually old-fashioned, it's actually quite modern. And I really like the fact that you brought up there is e- equality that we're looking for, right? It's not about not having your voice heard, which you rightly pointed out, that say that, you know, the wife have any opinion can bring it up to the husband, they can have a good discussion about it. But the secret sauce here is the fact that um, at the end of the day, the husband will make the decision. Mm. And it's not that he will be bulletproof, right? He's still a human, he will fall and he will make horrendous decisions. And we can all know that. <laughs> but um, he will take responsible on that piece, yep. right? So which I think that's why the creation of God is so amazing, right? Because the Christ, the church, you know, all that relationship that you read from the Bible and how it emulates the, the man and wife. There's so much deeper meaning to that than what we read from just one sentence that the wife are sub- is submissive. Mm. That requires maybe a lifetime to really fully understand the impact of it. But just from the few years that being married, I really feel like, you know, that is so powerful. And the reason why I, I want to share was because one of the times where um, not my own husband who's made the decision but from another friend they talk about having this specific lamb to buy in the house right the wife furiously say that they don't need that because it just doesn't match you know the, the wire the power and everything right but the husband say no we should buy it so the wife being a good submissive wife say yes and that doesn't mean that um, even though it's a wrong decision we all know that he, she bought it, she brought it home. Somehow, God, in a miraculous way, managed to make the lamb return back. Oh, that's interesting, okay. Yes! Yeah. So, you see, that's so amazing because God will correct anything, even if it's not right. But the wife submitted it to it. The relationship was so much better and prosper. And the, it really encouraged the husband to, to make further decisions going forward. Mm. And, and I think that's the beauty of it. I, I think I only saw a very slight glimpse of the beauty in my few years of marriage. But I really do hope to see more mm. going forward. I'm so glad that we have this conversation about the yeah. the faith, the summi- submissive wife, mm. which I think a lot of the world sees in a different way. Yeah, so ha- having said that, as you shared a bit about marriage life, yeah. um, so how do you view men now? And what if mm. there's one thing you want to tell men generally, what would that be? So maybe I talk about before and after so that I can you know, have a contrast and co- context of that. So before I feel like you know, men is not very powerful. They are so weak. Uh, and 
I think men are just oh they're just like my equal or even lower, right? Um that's sad to say, but but after I got married and 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 now with this partner, it's it's very different because my definition of men is actually somebody that will take responsible and make the decision mm. and man up, literally man up and 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 take the you know authority, right? Which now I see that is really truly what I would want my partner to be and mm. as we journey together in in our marriage, that's where I see how he, you know, man up and really even in times that was difficult, you know, like during life and death and you know like situation that in sickness, he was able to make those decision at a uh, of course as informed as he can be. Mm. And that brought me a new sense of wow, this is really a man, you know, from the equal or below kind of feeling to like oh, he's so much more um stable, dependable even in times of my weakness. He could rise up for those occasions. I mean, not that he's rise up, like, but he's he's there, lah. Mm. So he can he can really do those things. That have changed my perspective of men, and that also made me think that right, if a man is allowed to be more than what we think of as for those very strong families, or you know, the thing that female is much more powerful than men, or think that men are not men because they're so weak, um, like what I previously thought of. Probably time to let go and let the let the man you know to man up you know to have that opportunity to feel that when I make a decision my you now my wife will follow me you know and we can move forward together and and have each other's back mm. on that. I think that's the part where I'm I'm really um, um, I'm not perfect yet. There's times where I still think that ah, your decision really doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> so, but I always tell myself you know I just. Follow and submit, and you know, say my piece. Not that I will, my voice is silenced. I will still, you know, I'm strong, right? I will just say whatever I want, and I tell you this is what I want. Go figure out and fi- make sure that this is what is going to come back. And if there's anything, you are the one that's going to take the, the blame, right? So, I think that's that's the part where I have shifted my mindset from where I used to think and to where I am now. Mm. What I would like to tell men. Um, Probably not be afraid, not be intimidated by strong women, especially when they think that you know, um, powerful women, you know, in 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 terms of in career, influential, or even somebody who is more ed- educated, right? Mm. I think don't be intimidated by women for one, and really try to voice out and man up. <laughs> as simple as that. Um, I'm not saying that you know like. Everybody has a stereotype of physically manning up, you know. But it's really the the inner strength, more than just I don't know wear army suit and and be man. That's that's not what I'm thinking of. But really have that authority and and being not to lot over your mm. your female partner, right? But really to to love her so much and you will take responsible for whatever that you guys make the decision yeah. together. And I think that's much more than. They they think that you know the man will lot after the woman when when the woman is submissive. It's not that. It's more than that. It's the fact that she he will love her like his own body. Mm. Can you imagine how how would he ever do anything bad to his own body? He will not. What? So so that's the part where we need to fully understand before we can dissect the part where the submissive wife is. Any parting words on your end for the female <laughs> audience? <laughs> so there's this um there's this book. From quite a while back, right? The title is "Men Are from Mars and Women Are from Venus." Oh yes, yes. I uh, after this conversation, I would say I don't agree with the title. I don't think that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. I think we are both from Earth, both equal yet so distinct in how we are. True. And with these differences and similarities, we can actually make good things happen. In be in the workplace, be in churches, be in families, and Whatever the cases, the whatever social roles that we are called to, yeah. when we recognize our roles, we take up the the responsibility for these roles, and we allow the other gender to do their roles. Yes, I think we don't solve the world's problems, right? But I think it's easier to face the world's problems in this way when we have one less when when we take something that divides us and we recognize that it doesn't, it should not divide us, and it will not divide us so long as we understand each other. Agree. 
I appreciated the conversation and the stories. I think hearing lived experiences is important. And while empathy and conversations will not solve the problems, they are not silver bullets, but they are good first steps to take to become better with each other. So today I think we talk, um, what I learned was that we are really not that different ultimately, though we have differences for sure. Um, as long as we learn to live with each other and know that the differences are going to exist no matter what, we can complement and achieve much more together. Thank you for watching. Before we end, remember to share the description box below. There are some questions that you can share with your friends. We hope your video will not only make you think, but when you share it with your friends, you can talk about these questions and you can become a connection with your life. So you must share it, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. 好，下个星期四晚上八点半见，锁定我们的下一集哦，拜拜。